All right, yo, so if you're new to the channel, I encourage you to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and let's get a thumbs up going so other people can see the video. You know what I'm saying? So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to go over how to make a beat on Ableton Live 10 Lite using a MIDI keyboard. In this case, we are using my Alisa V25. Boom, 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 boom. I love this puppy. But anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the concept, the process of how to create a beat. So the first thing we got to do is we're actually going to try to flip the screen so y'all can see the screen and follow along and hear my annoying ass voice. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a brand new set. So right now, um, what I want you guys to see is that you don't need a full suite of Ableton Live 10 to get started making beats. I've been making beats for about a month now, give or take, and I've been using Live 10 Lite. Right now, I'm just raising the capital so I can purchase a full suite. So yeah, don't let that hold you back. This is a free suite, and my capacity is that I can only use eight tracks, which is these things right here. But if you play your cards right, you can actually make a full beat using just eight tracks. So the first thing you want to do is create a brand new session. Okay, actually no, a brand new arrangement. So you check over here, this little box over here, this is called the info view, and you can actually see that by clicking on view and click info. And that's what's gonna toggle, it's, it's gonna toggle this little box on the side. So anything that you hover over is gonna tell you what it is. So track display is this, this is a MIDI track name, these are the instruments, whatever. Everything gets described in the little box on the left, which is awesome, especially if you're just getting started. So over here, this percentage shows you how much power, how much usage your computer has to put in in order to run Ableton. So obviously you gotta be careful with that, keep it low. And this over here is important. This is your arrangement view selector and your session. Right now we're working in arrangement because we're making a whole song. You know what I'm saying? If you, you need a session, if like you're just like jamming out, but we're down to get down to. If we're trying to get down to business, then to actually create a full beat, then you actually need an arrangement. So what we're trying to do right now is uh, we have our BPM, our beats per minute at 120. That's fine. And we can toggle on this right here is your metronome. So you can hear that shit going off every five seconds. And then I don't know if you guys saw in another video where I had the, um, what's it called? I had the countdown timer and that shit was taking forever. I got it fixed because um, it takes uh, one bar. I fix it over here. Boom, 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 boom. So now when I get started, it counts down to one bar. So it's like one like, like 30 seconds I had. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with drums just to mess around. And over here on the right where it says MIDI, as long as it says MIDI track, that's how you can like mess around with it. Audio is when you're inserting an audio clip, but MIDI track is anything over here and that's what you're allowed to play around with. So you can change the colors by right clicking. So we're gonna put that nice little green green and let's start off with drums. So these are your categories and guys, Everything right here, this is all that's included for free with Live 10 Lite. So like I said, there's no excuses to not get started for free making beats. You can literally download Ableton Live 10 Lite right now and make use beats, make your own beats with all these free uh, sample packs. And then we're going to talk about in another video how you can actually get some more for free, but that's for another video. So uh, we're going to click with the classic. Um, we're going to click uh, the drum the 808 drums and the way it works is you see this little like this little like diagram right here if it has like the two little selectors um the two little sections that means you can put it in the midi track so you can hear it and then what you hear that gets broken down and then you get to select each every single instrument so we're going to click this one and we're that's the one we're going to use <coughs> So then once that happens, over here, this is our first channel, our first track or whatever. And then this right here, it's red. That means that we aren't recording. Like it says it over here, boom, check it out, aren't recording. And what that means is that whatever we record is only gonna record that. So this is the only thing we're gonna focus on. So what we're gonna do now is, um, you guys can see over here, I have the uh, actual drum pad. And as you can see, it's been set to my MIDI keyboard, 
me see if I can show y'all my media keyboard. My Elisa's V25. I love this baby. So right now, I press this one. It's going to hit the kick. This hits the snare. This hits the rim. Clap. Open hi-hat. It's going to hit all of them up to like, I think like, there's only like 12, 16. All right. So yeah. So if I want, what I can do is I can create the beat using this. I can do that. So what we're going to do is just to record it just for the sake of the video. We're going to grab the first four bars. Just like that. That's what we select. That's what we want to record. And then we are going to go ahead and press record. And we're going to record that. And as you can see, like I said over here, this... As long as this is red, that means we're good to go. We're ready to record. So let's go ahead and record right now. All right, cool. So let's change the BPM. Uh, let's take that back to 85. Let's see how it's going down. Terribly off key. All right, ready. So let's go at it again. Let's record, and we gonna go one, two, three. Let's select those first four bars. We're gonna click record. All right, that's just the first four bars done. So what not what I can do now is I'll press stop, and when you press stop, it brings it back to the beginning, and I press play, it's gonna play it back. That's what I just played, right? So then now what I can do if I want, I can select this with the little Mickey Mouse hand, and when I click on that, it actually toggles the this down here. This is called the piano roll. So now I can actually select it over here. If I want, <coughs> excuse me, I can actually edit these out. So what I'm gonna do just to show y'all is pause that. I'm gonna click on that. And we're gonna put right click draw mode and we just put all claps just so, so y'all can hear it. You see? So I have the option of I can either draw in my beat using the draw mode on the piano roll or whatever right or I can actually just I can play it on the uh, on the MIDI keyboard it's up it's totally up to me all right so we can delete that garbage and that's pretty much it uh, just mess around with it see what you like like I said and then uh, let's make a simple beat So we have this over here, and let's play it back. So then if I want, I could right click here and quantize it. So what is it gonna do? It's gonna align it to the next the, the, the next bar over. So it, it, it should put it in rhythm. <coughs> but I realized I said in another video, like inspired by Jay Dilla, that doesn't always work. So, one thing that you can press that always works for me is Control Z, which is undo. And that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, everything else is just a lot of messing around, depending on what you want things to sound like. But that's pretty much it. If I want to add another sound, let's put uh, let's get pianos in here. Let's use this one just for the sake of the video. Drag it over. I can, if I want, I can drag it over or I can double click it. But just make sure that when you double click it, so if I wanted this one over here, I have to select this and then double click it because if I wouldn't have pressed this one, it would have dragged it over here and all this would have sounded like the piano. So now 
same thing happened. Um, I dragged this sound over. So now it's gonna sound like I have the piano here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag these four bars and then we're gonna click solo because I don't wanna hear the drums. And we're gonna record. I don't know. And then bring it back. And then we play it back with just the solo. We're just going to hear that. <coughs> right? If we take off S for a solo, it's going to play the whole thing. That actually doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> But yeah, uh, then from there you can just mess around with it, see how you want it to sound, so let's press solo, and then let's see what happens if we change the knobs, filter cutoff, playback. So yeah, <coughs> you just mess around with it based on what you want it to look like, what you want it to sound like. Um, as far as plugging this stuff goes, like I said, these are all things that you can do with free uh, Ableton Live 10 Lite. And you can do a lot. You can create a beat just using what you have for free. So don't use not having money as an excuse because you can do it. You feel me? Um, if you want, if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you can select, um, they actually have a computer MIDI keyboard, so you can use your actual computer keyboard and use that to create a beat. Or like I said earlier, you can use a piano roll and just get creative with that. You feel me? Um, but yeah, if you guys are interested in buying the MIDI keyboard, I'm going to put a link in the description. You guys can get it on Amazon. That's an affiliate link. And if you guys purchase through my affiliate link, I make a commission. That'd be pretty awesome. You guys don't have to. But yeah, um, at the end of the day, when it comes to like all this stuff and like with working with Ableton and stuff, it really is all about like just getting the hang of it. Like, you know, figuring it out on your own because I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube as well. But it's only when I actually go out and actually try to figure shit out on my own that I've actually gotten better at it. Because, like, the first week that I had Ableton, I was like, I don't understand what the fuck I'm doing. Like, I would get such a headache because it was so overwhelming. But at the end of the day, you're just making music. You feel me? So all you need is a good sample pack with some drums that you like and a good melody, like, you know, like some good guitars, some good strings, some good pianos, some good violin or whatever, and then some good 808 or whatever. And then you just, you know, you mash it up until you come up with a beat that you like. That's all it is. It all comes down to your creative process. Everything else is just like the technicality of it. You just have to, like, work around and figure it out. But for the most part, your best friend is going to be Control z or Undo. Because if you fuck something up, just undo it and start again. The thing that did happen to me once, I forgot what I did. All I did was I X out of the project and I started all over again. I didn't save. And that was it. You feel me? Like, there's not much that you can really do about it. Um, it's just practice, practice, practice. That's going to help you get better. You feel me? And that's it. Guys, that's all I have for today's video. Hopefully, my next video, my voice will be back. If you guys have any suggestions for anything else you'd like to see, this was actually suggested by a subscriber. I truly appreciate it. I hope you learned a few things about Ableton and how I use my MIDI keyboard to make a beat. Um, if you guys have any questions or suggestions, drop them down in the comment section. Don't forget to like, comment. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. And like always, don't sleep on me, baby. Boom. Peace.